it's impossible to escape the aesthetic that we've created because it's like trying to escape your own accent. And uh, I think forever that I'm trying to escape it and trying to find a new way of doing things, it always creeps back in. And uh, you know, I think I've learned to kind of celebrate and enjoy listening to my own voice. I'm Matt Pike, I'm the founder and creative director of Universal Everything and this is pretty much the area I spend most of my time in conjuring up the sort of things we do in the studio. Although I started Universal Everything on my own, it's grown to be four people now and the way it works for us is that we all meet up face to face and talk through stuff and figure stuff out and then we all go back to our own studio caves and concentrate and to me, that's the best way of working, you know, and then you'll get together and you're so excited to show each other what you've been making. You know, it's just a real nice buzz in the studio. As a kid, I was really obsessed with drawing and painting. And although I was super interested in the kind of organic analog side of creation, I was also really intrigued as to how the computer can really enhance what you can do with your own hands, you know. Now, I've always got so many ideas I want to do and that's what led me to do a lot of video based pieces. Some of it was music video directing, some of it was iDents for MTV, some of it was advertising, some of it was pure video art and it was always about us kind of being commissioned as artists really more than designers. We really kind of try and take the essence of a brand or an idea for a gallery and try and amplify that. But it's always about somehow expressing it in a way that hopefully has never been seen before. When we first started working with digital technology, there was always this kind of coldness to things and I always felt so detached from you know, what you see out here or how you interact with people. And one thing that I started doing what I thought really kind of added a layer to it, which really inspired me to think about anthropomorphism and empathy and how you can add that into work is you take an inanimate shape and you stick two dots on it and it becomes alive suddenly. Two eyes, you can stick eyes on anything and suddenly it becomes alive. And it's such a simple way of just bringing a soul into anything. And the same with adding feet, you know, we work with 3D printing, we had this very complex kind of architectural type structure. As soon as you grow legs on it, it becomes this kind of cute, lovable character. And I just love the kind of graphic simplicity of that's all it takes and suddenly you've got a heartbeat in an object. Another project we're doing is a series of video sculptures, I guess we call it, where it's um, using motion capture, which we've captured from a Tai Chi master, um, and using that motion data to create these very um, human but abstract sculptural forms that will be rendered in a very realistic way. So with the, the lasers video sculpture, what we want to do is to have the, the silhouette of the Tai Chi defined by the lasers emitting from the body. So really only when it comes into movement can you sense a presence of a human in there. And for me that kind of motion is really important. That's the thing that sort of breathes the soul into the work. So what's interesting about this is, you know, when it's paused, it's effectively kind of, I don't know, like a contemporary architectural proposal. But as soon as you press play and bring it to life, so this is just a test at the moment. What we're trying to do now is think about the materials very carefully and think about how to create something which feels very realistic. It feels like you can almost touch it or something, but it's, it's never going to be attainable in real life because it only lives within the screen. We often get really excited by sort of emerging technologies. So things that when motion capture became much more accessible and it's something we're starting to play with. Um, also, when you know three, 360 panoramic filmmaking 
becomes accessible, then that's another thing. So we really like to sort of paint and sculpt with these emerging technologies. And I think that's kind of what's interesting for me is you feel like you really are at the forefront of uh, the medium. And it feels like you've got such a blank slate and no legacy behind you. So you, you're not being dragged down by any historical references or people's expectations. You know, you've got the whole world ahead of you. We were invited by Hyundai in Korea. We created a series of video sculptures. So we had motion capture of dancers creating huge kind of permanent steel sculptures through the gallery space. We shot very high end, thousand frame per second footage dangling over the steel foundries, breaking all the health and safety rules to achieve something that's never been shot before. And what we tried to do is really emphasize the importance of the human and the role in the creation of things. Although a lot of what you see is industrial and automated, the important part is that the human spirit is in everything. A lot of the stuff we do is striking a balance between expressing the human form in a way so you can really relate to it or you can really feel the pain of someone battling in a hurricane. And some of it is more just sensing a presence of a human in form. So it might be them hidden within a costume that's on fire or made of rock, or it might be them abstracted into eternity by just seeing their movement carving a shape across the space. But um, I think it's always a really important part of my work because it, it feels like a a reflection of the viewer you know you can see yourself in the work and i think that's really important and you can do that by playing and painting with the human form <laughs>